second um, repealer, and uh, this is also constituent-led legislation, so I'm really uh, proud to sponsor it as well. Um, we have this interesting law in Utah that, um, that requires that we um, force our municipalities and other organizations, local subdivisions, to post their requests for proposal for road maintenance things, to post them in the newspaper for a period of time. So that's actually in our code, that they have to put them in the newspaper for three weeks, and they must do newspapers with X size of circulation, and you're right, this is kind of an artifact of the pre-internet days that, um, you know, it also helps to, quite honestly, prop up an industry. What you're seeing is you're seeing these RFPs in the newspaper direct the people that are trying to read it to a website that was created at the state level for these types of things called BitSync, which uh, I know some friends in the technology space understand how RFPs work. And BitSync is a software technology the state's already invested in that allows people to subscribe to it for different cities, for different types of projects, for a myriad of things. And uh, this bill would eliminate the newspaper notification requirement, which should save municipalities money and therefore save taxpayers dollars. It seems like it's common sense, but from my understanding, we've attempted to make other modifications to newspaper notification requirements in the past, and it's an uphill battle. So, uh, but, I, but I believe it's important. Brett? You know how I feel about this one. You hate it, I know. Well, it's just, we have so many different communications now. A lot of people don't go to the newspaper to see these notices anymore. They go to our website, they go to state websites. That's where we publish, too. But the hit on the actual is pretty, for one posting, could be $15,000, $2,000 for a week notice. If we have to go two or three week notice, we're talking $5,000, $7,000 per posting. And the newspapers are starting to lose momentum because we're all getting smarter. We'll give you a, a, a brief, we cut down the words. All cities are doing, we'll cut down the words so we get charged less. And then say refer to our website about the top to get the details. But it's, it's, it, I know this constituent that brought this up, I believe, and they were amazed with what we spend. And they said, who reads a paper anymore? Well, there's a, some people that do, but the majority of the public does not anymore. Uh, there's a large segment of our population that does read the newspaper. I don't fault anyone for wanting to get their news from the newspaper, but I think that there's a common sense approach that says that um, it isn't really about using government money to prop up an industry through advertising when we have other more efficient, more widely used means that also get the same thing accomplished. I think the part that bothers me the most is, by law, we're required to spend money and give it to papers. Mm -hmm. So, so, by, so the papers are lobbying heavily to defeat this bill, and that's why it's had some uphill battle. But it just doesn't make sense. So how many are companies are you going to do that for? By law, force us to spend dollars at one place. And that's what that's been created for for communication, which I, I, that's a flaw. That's right. Thoughts on that one? Yeah. Any other concerns? Yeah. Okay. What's the what's the legislation going to say? Where, like, are they going to have the same wording to notify notification wise, but they won't specify where they have to notify? No, we're going to we're going to um, point them to a state run notification service. Okay. There there is the potential that smaller cities and towns, and they're you know Harriman's. Harriman's actually a fairly sizable city. South Jordan, uh, that I also represent part of, is a sizable city. Riverton is a sizable city. In fact, Harriman's the smallest of the three. And we have a great website, right? We have, you know, they've invested in technology to allow that to happen and, and be very enabled for, for businesses, consumers, et cetera. But there are many cities in our state that are small. Um, there are counties in our state that have smaller budgets than Harriman City. And they can't invest in the same kind of technology that Harriman City has. So if we were to just say, make it a local decision and locally make sure you provide transparency on where those will go, it, I think that we run into bigger problems. But as a state, we've invested in this service. Municipalities use it. In fact, many municipalities in their, in their newspaper say, go to this website and pull down the RFP. So we're just saying, eliminate the step of making the taxpayers have to pay to have notices in so newspapers. Does, do the localities pay the state to use the service? I don't know the answer to that, Chip. Right. Do you know? Do you have to pay to use BitSync? No, it's, it's free to the cities and it's free to do anybody who wants to bid on any project. Okay, good to know. Okay, any more on that one? 
I was, at I, Senator, just, I was at Senator I Osmond's. I think the representative for taking that issue on. It's not a sexy issue. It's not a big issue. <laughs> and, and, but, you know, $5,000 in, in Class C road <laughs> funds, you know, for, for, for a summer's worth of road projects, that's $5,000 in potholes mm -hmm. cities can be filling instead. Yeah. Uh, instead of, as John explains, propping up these papers. We posted for a building commission as an inspector today. Now we're on $15,000, $2,000. Brett and I have discussed this issue, and, and John was very gracious enough to take a real good look at this, and we, the city's really